Good morning, everyone. Um, I, I really appreciate the time to address you this morning. I, I don't realize, maybe think that this has a high priority on a lot of your radars, but it has a very high priority for me. I'd like to share with you some of the things that have happened to me in the last 15 years and hope I'm not lecturing you and I'm not telling you what to do. I just would like to give you some inside baseball on how legislature works. Uh, I've been in the legislature for 15 years now. I'm termed out next year in 2020. In 2003, Maine passed a referendum to allow a casino at racetracks, both of our racetracks. It had to get local authority. Bangor got authority, Scarborough did not. So we ended up with one racetrack with a casino. After the referendum was passed in 2003, it went before the legislature in 2004, and then setting Governor Baldacci put in a bill to change the way the cascade was structured. He didn't particularly like the way Sean Scott um, had set the cascade up, and we all in the industry agreed with him. Although the industry is the one that was responsible for getting the referendum passed. We, we circulated this, the referendum questions, got the signatures, got it on the ballot, supported it, and got it passed. So in 2004, as we worked through this, I said to myself, as a horse racing person, some one of us in this industry needs to be in this building. Couldn't get anybody to take the bait. Uh, I had just sold my business, so I had the time to do it. Um, you certainly don't do this job in the state of Maine for money. We don't get paid but very little. Uh, we work about six months of the first year of the biennium. We work about four months of the second year of the biennium. So anyway, I ran, and my sole purpose of running was to protect harness racing in Maine because I knew once the money started to flow, and the, it had to be run through the legislature and then passed along to the different entities who were in the cascade. That if someone wasn't in the building to walk the halls and pay attention to what was going on, that probably it wouldn't last too long. Well, I'm proud to say that 15 years later, the cascade is still the same as it was that we passed in 2004. Why is that? Well, I hope that I can take credit for part of it for being in the chambers and being inside the chambers when votes are going on or when discussions are going on and making friends with lots of people on both sides of the aisle and, and having the ability to, to go to functions with them and get to know them personally. Politics is a strange thing that we do here, very strange. So if one thing that comes from my message, I hope that you will realize that the best way for you to protect your constituency is to get someone elected and get them inside the chambers. Because being in the chambers gives you lots and lots of advantages. This year, in January, when the, the bill titles came out, there were 2,216 bills. I went through every title and I identified 17 bills that probably would have effect on harness racing in Maine. One of those bills was a bill to repeal the allocation of the slot revenue cascade. Boy, that turned on the light real bright real quick. Titles come out, but there's no language with them yet because they're in the revisor's office being written. There's simply an idea that's going to be developed going on. So I went to the horsemen and I said to them, here are the bills that we need to be watching, and I went to the Breeders Association as well. I said, here are the bills that we need to watch, but here is one we really need to look out for. It's one that's going to open the cascades and do something. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's about us, but I suspect that it is. I looked at the sponsor of the bill, and I couldn't seem to put together why this particular person was doing what it was that he was doing. So I met with him, and I asked him what he was up to. This is what he told me. You people, meaning the horsemen, have been on welfare long enough. You don't deserve the money that you're getting. We need to reallocate this money to education. So I said to him, so what is in the bill? How, how are you doing that? Well, he said, I don't know. It's a concept draft. That, that's a really, really big red flag, because a concept draft goes before the committee, and there's nothing in it. So you don't know what you're fighting. 
They can put anything they want in a concept draft. They put a few ideas maybe, but, but they don't put anything in it so you, you know what you're fighting. So immediately we started to rally the troops. We did it by, by social media, we did it by email. We told the horsemen, the breeders, the fairs, the commercial tracks, the OTBs, watch out. We're in trouble, we think, that they're going after our money. When, when I'm at the State House and I'm not in session, and I'm not at committee, I'm working the bill. I went to all of the sponsors who co-sponsored this bill with Representative Handy from Lewiston. Couldn't get from them what they were trying to accomplish. Uh, they said, well, I signed on just, just to be as courteous to the guy. He asked me to sign on, I signed on. About two days later, the bill actually came out, and in it were very specific things that they wanted to do to our industry. So number one, the, the sponsor of the bill lied to me. That was a red flag. Number two, he told me that he put it in for one of his constituents. Well, I couldn't figure out how that would happen from Lewiston. Lewiston, right, Lewiston had a racetrack for a number of years, and I didn't believe that anybody from Lewiston was going to ask to put the industry down. So we looked at the bill. The bill was going to take 14% of all, of all the cascades that had to do with horse racing, except the agriculture fairs. They didn't touch the agriculture fairs. The next option in the bill was going to take all the money and give it to uh, University of Maine Systems, Community <laughs> Colleges, Maine Maritime Academy, and education as a whole. The third option, or the third, third idea, was to combine any part of that. And the bill got reference to the Veterans and Legal Affairs Committee because it was going to open the cascade, and they're the ones that oversee that. So immediately, I worked with all 13 members of the VLA committee trying to tell them about what they should do or shouldn't do and how they could help us out. Early on in January, um, when our elections, when we got sworn in at the State House, I saw that the Republican Party lost 13 votes in the House. We lost 13 people in the House. We lost seven people in the Senate. Maine legislature went from being a split legislature or Republican-Democrat control to strictly a Democrat. And we elected a Democratic governor. Fortunately for me, the Democratic governor is, was a close friend uh, because I had served in the legislature with her. There's a lot of friction at the State House between the Republicans and the Democrats. I could see that there was some really dark light at the end of the tunnel. So what I did was, um, to put myself in the best position for all of Maine, I unenrolled. I've been a Republican for more than 50 years. I still think Republican. I still vote Republican. But I needed to change my image because I needed the folks on the other side to help me defeat an issue that was going to put this industry totally out of business. We tried to kill the bill between the bodies in referencing uh, that we couldn't accomplish that. I asked for a meeting with the governor. 24 hours later, I was granted the meeting with the governor, a one-on-one -on -one meeting, which I was very grateful for. Um, we, have, we had her support, she said, depending on what the committee did. I met with the Senate majority leaders, which were Democrats. I met with the Senate president. I met with the House majority leader. And I enlisted their support and asked them if there was any way that we could bury the bill before it ever had a public hearing. Because the public hearing was the thing that I feared the most. They all said that due process needed to take place, that we should honor the representative's uh, request of having a bill and have a public hearing. Um, and they wanted to do that. But that we, the leadership, the industry would have their support when it came down to it, depending on what the committee came up with. That evening on the way home, after having met with the governor and the leadership, I said to myself, there's something that just doesn't add up here. So I went home and I looked up the sponsor of the bill to see what other kinds of bills that he had sponsored. And then I began to look around at things that I had done in the past. And all of a sudden, the light came on really, really bright. I go, I know the answer. I know where the bill is coming from. And I know what it is they're trying to do. Ladies and gentlemen, it was the main friends of animals. Go on to their web page and take a look about what they say about our industry, about horse racing. 
They, this was their fourth bill in the 15 years that I've been in Augusta. This is their fourth try at trying to sink us. Their goal is to put us out of business. They hate harness racing. They don't like what we think we are not doing to our animals. And they have the support of HSUS, and they have the support of PETA, which is extremely dangerous for us. What they did this time, the first three bills they put in, all went before the Agriculture Committee, which is where I, I sat on that committee. They got nowhere with those bills. Two of them were horse slaughter bills, and the other one was animal abuse bills. They got nowhere with them. We defeated them soundly. This time, the group decided that education was a heart thumper. People love education. They want to take care of our children. So they figured that if they were going to take the cascade money and move it to education and take it away from the industry, that that would sink us. They, they could accomplish what they were setting out to do. So I went to the State House the next day and I said to some of the leadership, this is where this is coming from and this is what I told the governor. This is coming from Maine Friends of Animals. This is not about education. This is about sinking an industry that's 100 plus years old in the state of Maine. We need your help. They announced the public hearing was going to be in two weeks. So we went to the offices of the Horsemen's Association. I'm on the main board of directors of the Horsemen's Association. We went to the breeders, the fairs, the commercial tracks, and the OTBs, and we said, we need to turn people out for this public hearing. It was the public hearing was last Wednesday. And we said to them, you need to be accountable and you need to show up. And we will be doing a head count, and there's no reason to not be here. Because if you don't show up, you're out of business. Well, we scared the crap out of them. They showed up. 200 of them or more came to the State House that morning. I got a text about 9 o'clock in the morning. The hearing started at 9.30 that the security had shut them off from coming into the building because all of the rooms, the overflow rooms and the committee rooms were full. There was no place for them to sit. The chair of the VLA committee who was going to conduct the hearing was now on the run. He didn't know what the hell to do because he had seen so many people. He knew that he was going to be terribly intimidated. So they were turning people away. So I went down to the first floor where security was and I met with the head of the security and I said, you cannot do that. This is the people's house. You have to let them in, regardless of whether you have a place for them to sit or not, it makes no difference. They need to come in this building. They have driven hundreds of miles, some of them, to testify against this bill. They agreed, they let them come in, we walked the hallways, we shuffled them around. The public hearing started, the man presented the bill Representative Handy from Lewiston had a very short speech about the bill. And then, being a legislator, being inside the chambers, gives me special privileges or gives legislators special privileges. We can testify at any time we want, for or against the bill. We don't have to be on a list of people that are going to be called to the, to the rostrum to testify. And when they have a big turnout like that, they limit everybody to three minutes. They don't limit us to time. Another advantage of being a legislator. So a couple of the folks in the leadership um, stepped up and testified against the bill, which was powerful, really powerful. So my visit to them really made a difference. I was the third guy up. So my, present, my speech was eight pages, took me about 15 minutes to complete it. And what I did was, because legislators don't understand what we do, they have no idea how we get our money. They believe the story that this guy is telling about we're on welfare. Because you have a racehorse, you automatically get some of that money. Well, we all know that's not true. You've got to make thousands of dollars investment. It's a very high risk business. So I told the committee that. I said, you don't understand this money just doesn't flow to us automatically. We have to earn it. And I told them about the qualifying races, then I told them how the purses were paid out. And I told him everything that I could think about on how difficult it was to get any of that money. You know, that resonated with them. They didn't understand it. And they came to me afterward and said, you have no idea how helpful that was. But now I want to tell you the icing on the cake. And this is really, really important to all of you and all of your industries. At the end of my speech, I said to them, I know that the man behind me who's behind this bill, 
This is his fourth attempt at trying to put this industry out of business. He is on a, he is on a mission to sink harness racing. He doesn't like it. He thinks that we abuse our animals. And he has all, have all these negative things that he's going to tell you, and he probably is going to have some very horrible pictures. Um, don't take any of that to be the truth, because it's not the truth. Let me tell you about our industry. So I went on to tell him about SOS, the supporting of our standard bridge, how we did that, how we step up to the plate every year and we appropriate $100,000. Their eyes lit right up. So this one person, one on the committee said, so you really do that? I go, we do do that, and we have been doing it for a number of years. We care about the horses. We care about our industry, and we need you to kill this bill so that we can continue on. What do you think is going to happen to all of these horses if you don't, pa if you don't kill this bill? I said, and furthermore, SOS is now being developed into a brand new program, we hope, called Standard Bread Transition Alliance, which is something that people who are taking care of Standard Bridge will have an opportunity to apply for a grant, and you're going to hear about that later on. Very big. That got us lots, that got us from the 50-yard line to the 10-yard line. Then I said, as small a budget as the Maine Harness Horsemen's Association has, we appropriate $5,000 a year in our budget to take care of horses that fall through the cracks. Every year we appropriate $5,000. And out of the goodness of their heart, Bangor Historic Track sends $1 for every horse that starts at their race meet to the animal welfare people at the Department of Agriculture. We are pulling our weight. We care. We need your help. I step back. 30 more people from our industry, horsemen, fair people, OTB guy, commercial track guy, all stood up and did very, very passionate testimony. The guy who was responsible for the bill, his name is Robert Fisk. He got up there and he blabbered on about how bad we are and how our welfare is bad and all that kind of thing. Every time that he has had a bill, HSUS, and Peter were there to support him. He has finally figured out that he can't win in Maine. They never showed up. Not one person got up and spoke in favor of his bill. That, folks, I knew then that we probably were a winner. Normally at the end of the hearing, the committee has a, schedules a work session so that for two weeks out. And that gives them plenty of time to work the bill behind closed doors and that kind of thing. But before the last testimony was completed, the chair of the committee high signed me to go outside. I went outside his office, went into his office, and he said, we're going to go into work session as soon as this last person is done testifying, and we're going to kill this bill. Now, here is a guy that's never been supportive of us. He's always written editorials in the Ellsworth paper about the industry not being worth saving because we don't do lots of things. After he'd heard all the testimony that I had given and others had given and, and leadership had given, he said, Don, you're right. I've, I've misinterpreted how you work. We need to kill this bill. We'll kill this bill as soon as the last person testified. So we went around the rooms and we said to everybody else, don't testify anymore. Let's stop this thing now. It's been three hours. Let's let them kill. They want to kill it. Let's kill it now. Stop. Don't testify anyone else. So we shut people off after about 30 people. They immediately went into work session. They had a very brief discussion, and someone moved ought not to pass, and it was unanimous. It was a 10 to 0 vote. So obviously the industry was blown away by that, and I went around to all of them and I said, let me tell you something right now. The only reason that we killed this bill today is because you showed up. If you hadn't have been in the room, we were going to be in trouble. They were going to open that cascade and they were going to do something to us. I'm not sure what it was. But because you showed up with your passion and your numbers and your friends and your relatives, we've killed the bill. The guy who was responsible for putting the bill, Maine Friends of Animals, uh, went out of there like a, like a whipped dog with a tail between his legs. So yesterday, when I'm in one of the committee meetings um, at the Legislative Advisory Council, I got this email, and I want to read it to you, 
because I want you to understand how powerful it was as to what the industry did in Maine and that might be helpful to you. This email is from Robert Fisk, Maine Friends of Animals, who I have met with on several occasions trying to pull him away from doing what it is that he's trying to do and convince him that we're doing the right thing. This is what he said. Hi, Don. A masterful job Wednesday. I mean it. I've been doing this since 1995, and I've taken some real beatings in the past, particularly from the Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, because he does everything, all kinds of animals. But never have I seen a better job in organizing for a hearing than you did for LD 715. The, the hearing came sooner than we expected, which was a plan, and we were not as prepared as we could have been, but it would not have mattered how much time we had, or how much testimony we had had. I sat through the whole hearing, and I also sat through the pull pulling bell last week uh, and listened to all their testimony to better understand the agriculture community. It was very informative. Perhaps, he says, we can avoid these bills in the future. If you and I could have a serious conversation about reducing, now listen to this, about reducing excessive whipping, drugging the horses, overbreeding, slaughter, pole sweating, and he's talking about the pulling horses, ganting, and he's talking about the pulling horses, and electric shock and training, which he's talking about the pulling horses, and about the monies being used from your entities to provide better care for the horses. And once we can get by the few bad actors and those few horses that are slipping through the holes, I think we'll be great. In the meantime, having been a basketball coach, a college basketball coach, I have to admire a well-coached game. Yours was textbook perfect. So where do you think HSUS and Peter are going to be with Maine Friends of Animals now? I think we've hit a home run, and I think they're going to be leaving us alone. And if any of what I said is helpful to you, I'm glad. I, I didn't mean to lecture you, but I just want to give you my passion for the industry. Thank you.